Okay, this is the last in the series for this last session, and it's going to be on chapter uh, 15 in the book, Adult Craniofacial Growth, written by my friend Rolf Behrens. Uh, the learning objectives here are to know the difference between males and females in terms of adult craniofacial growth, and to know the clinical significance of the fact that the human face continues to grow after age 18. So, important for you to think about the degree that the face might grow after adulthood. Because it's not a question of, uh, it's a question of amount of growth. Adults definitely do not grow as much as youngsters. So teenagers are definitely growing more quickly. Adults are growing at a slower rate. But they do change. Originally, before Dr. Behrens did his classic study on adult craniofacial growth, people felt that most of the changes that we saw in the human face after age 18 were actually changes in the soft tissue. What Behrens showed was that these changes were in fact happening in both the maxilla and the mandible and in the dentition. The changes were occurring underneath the skin, so it was more than just the effects of gravity weighing down the skin, that there were truly changes in the bony foundation of the face. Now, when might these changes be clinically important, because that's one of the learning objectives? Well, when would changes of a millimeter or less over 10 years make a difference? I mean, a millimeter, one thin dime. Probably the most important is in the area of teeth. Because if we would look at the skull here, and we would say that the changes in the teeth here are only of a degree of a millimeter, we might be able to notice that between our upper central incisors, for example. So if we had an implant placed for the upper right central incisor at age 25, and then at age 35, that implant tooth was one millimeter higher than the natural tooth on the left side. We would definitely notice that. So the changes that occur in, in adults are small, but significant when dental units are involved. When implants first became used in dentistry, they were mostly used for complete dentures so that you would have no teeth and then you would put implants in and put the denture on top of the tooth. It's only recently that we started to use implants to restore single teeth. And it's in this area that adult craniofacial growth and adult growth in general might impact the dental result. So you can imagine the difference it might make if you get a change of a millimeter or two millimeters um, in over the course of 20 years. The other thing I want you to get out of this chapter is that there is a difference between the way adult males grow and adult females. In general, the females tend to grow longer over time. Males tend to grow more horizontally with the lower jaw outgrowing the upper jaw. The final thing that you want to remember about this chapter is that the soft tissues grow more than the hard tissues. So the increase in the upper lip length is greater than the increase in the position and vertical growth of the maxilla or the maxillary teeth. What this means is that as you get older, you're going to show less and less of your teeth when you smile and talk, because soft tissues are growing vertically more than hard tissues. So to summarize the adult facial growth section, first thing is know that adults do grow. There's no displacement, but there is remodeling. The rate of change is much slower on the order of one millimeter over 10 years. Yet one millimeter can make a difference for small things like teeth. 
And the final thing to remember is that men and women grow differently over time, with women growing more vertically and men more horizontally. So those are the, the most important points to be taken out of Chapter 15, and I hope that helps you in your study. Thanks.